Introducing Josh Ride. So Josh Ride out of Medicine Hat, Alberta, making his way down. This is his amateur debut and your first fight in the cage. You can imagine uh, what must be going through somebody's head the first time they're going to step in there. Well, you can train all you want, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in train hard. You know, fight easy. But when you come in for the first fight of your your career, whether it's amateur or professional, you're dealing with a lot of new things you've never gone before. Whether they're butterflies, whether they're people looking for tickets the last minute of the fight when you're trying to get ready, you got to cut weight. You're probably doing a lot of things you never had to do under stress before. And it's always interesting to see how these guys come in. As we can see a close up on the face of Josh Fry, he looks very relaxed though. Yeah, very relaxed going in, and a bit of a smile there to his uh, corner. But I always talk about the first amateur fight being more of a do I like getting punched in the face test? Because the very first time you get punched in the head, you decide whether or not you want to be an MMA fighter. And that's the whole reason the amateur fights are around, to give people that experience. Introducing his opponent, Dusty Krams. Dusty Krams making his way to the cage. Another Champions Creed fighter, Brian Bird, right behind his left shoulder. Unlike Josh, Dusty has actually been in the cage before. I believe he is 1-0 as an amateur. Sorry, 0-1. Yeah, Owen won as an amateur, but again, the first fight that he was in wasn't necessarily a, a bad fight. He learned a lot from that fight going in, knew those positions, and again, we talk about that punch to the face, and uh, that's one of those things that you learn in that first fight and you take it to the second. You can see the tail of the tape. Josh actually weighed in a 155.5. Dusty came in a 183 even. You can see the gyms, Dusty Cramps out of Champions Creed. Josh out of Underground MMA and Medicine Hat. 0-1 against a guy making his amateur debut. But I'm a big fan of amateur fights for a couple of reasons. You touched on it, it's a great way to guy, for guys to get their feet wet. One thing I am in favor of in Calgary is a three, three minute round, giving the guys a lot of chance. You'll see a lot of times in the pros, cardio becomes an issue, but I believe in a three, three minute round, you're able to push yourself a little bit more. Um, I'm not a big fan of not being able to strike to the head of a grounded opponent. I think if you want to learn an, an amateur and get ready for the pros, you're gonna maybe possibly learn a lot of bad habits, habits by not protecting yourself. Well, and there is some news on that, which I'll get into here right after we have our official fighter introductions. This next bout will be in the middleweight division. Interesting first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a freestyle fighter, holding a record of no wins, no losses. He stands at six feet, one inches tall, and weighs in at 185.5 pounds. Fighting out of Medicine Hat, Alberta, presenting Josh Fry. Introducing second, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai fighter, holding a record of no wins, one loss. He stands at six feet, one inches tall, and weighs in at 183 pounds. Fighting out of Champions Creed, by way of Calgary, Alberta, presenting Dusty Crabs. Moving on to our second amateur fight of the evening here in Calgary, the third man, the man in charge of the bell rings is your referee. Mr. Len Coivisto. You were touching on the possible rule changes, Jeremy, when it comes to strikes to the ground at opponent of amateur fighters in Calgary. Well, yeah, the, the commission has put forward a, 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 a proposal regarding changing the, the rules to ground and pound, uh, taking away elbows at all times, and a good exchange by both fighters here. And uh, it, we'll have to wait to see how that comes forward with the uh, Calgary uh, uh, politicians approving that or not. Nice body shot thrown there 
by Dusty Cramps. A leg kick thrown in an overhand left by Dusty Cramps as well. Both fighters are coming out swinging early in this fight, Jeremy. Yeah, and you look at the two fighters standing by side by side, and you can see that Josh Rye definitely has a very athletic build, so probably has a good athletic background. But uh, you see the movement there, his, his hands are down, and he's swinging very much from the side and not straight forward, which doesn't show uh, a technique that's not that needs a little more focus on his boxing. 100% correct, and I got a feeling that if Dusty Cramps is able to settle in, if he's able to stand there in the pocket, with Josh, he's able to throw right down the middle. He's definitely gonna beat Josh to the punch because those punches are definitely coming from wide angles from Josh Fried. He's throwing them way out from left and right field. Well, and he did a good job of uh, stopping that takedown, was able to pry off and a little bit of a mouse under the left eye of Dusty Cramps. So uh, when the punches do land, they are doing a little bit of damage and a nice kick there. Yes, a leg kick echoes to the uh, TELUS Convention Center here in Calgary. And that was a different, better, uh, definitely a better uh, punch thrown by Josh Fried. That was more down the pipe. Yeah, very uh, straightforward. And he, he's looking like he's timing a good takedown and immediately countered there by Josh Fried. But a uh, good cage presence shown by Dusty Cramps ending up on top. You can hear the corner of Dusty Cramps, Brian Bird telling Dusty to target the body, punch to the body. And this is where, you know, if strikes to the head were allowed, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, you, you're looking at uh, a different form of defense where you can almost leave your head uh, unprotected because a lot of the things that are able to target the head are illegal under the commission rules as they stand. But uh, it's important for a fighter on top to remain busy, to remain busy by throwing those punches to the, uh, to the midsection. Otherwise, the official could call him up if it's not uh, not busy enough. You can see 40 seconds left in the round one on the assassin fight clock. Great job here by Dusty Cramps leaning into the body of Josh Fry. And that's one thing you want to use. You know, you want to use your elbows, you want to use your shoulders, you want to use your, your mass, your body weight, any chance you can to lean into your opponent and, and tire him out. Well, and you want to wear on the energy system, and especially since this is Josh Fry's first fight, he's not necessarily used to how this feels to be in a, in a combat situation and what it feels like. Uh, 10 seconds remain in the round now, and uh, a good first round by Dusty Cramps and uh, showing a little bit of cage veteran, uh, even though he's only had one fight. Yeah, savvy, you know, veteran savvy there. But when you only got one fight, but you've got the camp behind you. We talked about champion screen. As you can see, Brad Cardinal in the cage with Dusty Cramps as well as Brian Bird. Early on in the round, there's Josh Fried came out throwing those loop, looping punches, was able to land a couple. But about a minute in, Dusty Cramps was able to get the, the fight to the mat and pretty much for the last two minutes, as we'll go to the replay here, he mo more or less dominated from the ground. Yeah, we look at the replay here, and we show both fighters trying to get in, and seeming to get the better of the strikes in that exchange was Josh Fried, but uh, there's the first takedown attempt, and uh, Dustin Kranz able to land the second takedown attempt, and from there, again, like you mentioned, putting all his body weight, wearing him down, making him think that he's got to be in there for nine minutes. And for those of you who've never been in cage before that are watching that are MMA fans, a three-minute round is like sprinting for three minutes straight. And uh, a nice front kick there as well by Dusty Cramps. And here we can see the takedown from Dusty Cramps. And when Dusty was able to get the, the fight to the mat, he more or less dominated the last two, two, round, or two minutes of the round. I don't want to say dominated. Uh, Jeremy, what I want to say is he more or less controlled the last two minutes of the round. Not a lot of, you know, I didn't see any submission attempts. I didn't see a lot of huge shots, but he more or less grinded out the last two minutes. Now, is that enough for him to get the win or to get to get the uh, the round in his favor to score a 10-9 round for Dusty? Or did Josh do enough early in the first minute with those shots landed to possibly to to, see, uh, to to take that round on the judges' scorecards early on. Well, and, and in speaking with the judges after a previous event, I said, how do you determine, nice shot there by Josh Ride. how do you determine who wins a round? And he said, I look at each round individually and say, who did more to win the fight? So it's a very, uh, you know, you were on top for two minutes, but did you do any damage? Did you try and end the fight? Whereas you look at Josh Ride was landing some fairly decent shots and who did more to win the fight? We leave that in the hands of the judges, and that's why you and I are at the table and not at this judges. There's no doubt about that. And as we can see here, he's in side control. 
for dusty cramps. And a lot of times guys might want to work elbows to the head, but when you can't strike the head, maybe some elbows to the body, as we saw in the first round with that big body shot, you can do damage to the body as well. It might not mark up and, le and leave the marks on the exterior, but you definitely feel it on the inside. Yeah, and now he's dropping elbows. It is uh, Dusty Cramp, so a good job here listening to his corner, making sure that he's uh, staying busy on top and looking like he wants to finish the fight. But with uh, side control, we the most dominant position in a standard MMA fight is the mount, as you're able to uh, isolate the head. Uh, now side control is very beneficial because you can knee to the side, elbow to the side. Uh, good submission attempt here by Josh Fried. Yes, Josh Fry working for a Kimura, but Dusty Cram's doing a good job keeping that elbow locked in. You can hear the corner yelling for Dusty to switch to half guard. Very vocal Brian Bird in the corner of Dusty Cramps. And Dusty's not exactly listening to his corner at this right time. He more or less wants to work the ground and pound to the body. Well, uh, I have never been in an MMA cage, but having done uh, national and international level wrestling, the, the similarity, when you're on, on the mat or in the cage in this instance, you don't necessarily hear anything that's going on. A lot of it goes on instinct. And you do hear eventually, and, uh, as you get more experience in fighting, you learn how to listen to your coaches. But sometimes you can't even hear them if it's uh, super loud. So uh, going on instinct and uh, doing an okay job controlling them on the ground and uh, dropping some pretty vicious elbows to the midsection. Yes, Josh Fry is tying up the wrist of Dusty Cramps, but Dusty Cramps, every chance he's getting, he's dropping those elbows in, into the body of Josh Fry. And I like the technique, because not he's not just throwing the elbows, but he's leaning into him. Every time the elbow hits the body of Josh Fry, his, his, all the weight of Dusty Cramps is following down. He's driving not just into it, but right through, trying to drive that elbow right through uh, Josh's body into the canvas. Well, and uh, having never been really elbowed in a gut in this situation, I can't imagine how that feels, but uh, a nice pass there by Dusty Cramps as he looks to try and get the back of Josh Fried, and now working in a submission, just short time left though. Yes, our clock said 15 seconds, but we've got about three seconds left in round two as the horn goes to end round two. Just like the first round, Dusty Cramps came out, was able to get the takedown early, and once again, and unlike the first round, this round he did dominate, and he was able to do a lot of damage to the body of Josh Fry. Well, and this is, this is a time where Josh Fry's corner needs to tell him to keep it on his feet, because uh, I, I don't think that uh, they could be confident that they won round one, so you're looking at being down, or being tied one round apiece, or being down two rounds, so you have to say to your athlete, you need to stand up and you need to take advantage of where you are the more effective fighter, which is in a standing position. Being wary of those takedowns and being able to catch them as we look at the uh, Jack Carter replay and uh, of this pass here. Well done by Dusty Cramps getting to the side and then transitioning immediately to the back. And again, this goes to just rolling around every day with uh, great training partners at Champions Creek. It'll be very interesting to see what the uh, the mindset of Josh is coming out in this third round. I believe he's down two rounds to one, or two rounds to none, sorry. That first round, I could see Josh, you know, possibly having it, but I, I want to see some more urgency out of Josh Fright. I'm hoping he uses his footwork a little bit more. He's coming out early in round one and round two and throwing some big shots, but he was pretty much planted. His, you know, he wasn't circling very much. And with his feet planted, it Dusty Cramps was able to move into the for takedowns in both rounds. And once Dusty got the, the fight down, down to the mat, he was able to control both rounds. Well, you can take your boxing stance and modify it slightly by lowering it just a bit. That, that makes it able to catch those takedowns. On oh, a nice kick there, you could hear that one. And another leg kick. And uh, I think that the corner of uh, Josh Fry telling him to expect a takedown and Dusty Cramps coming out with three nice solid kicks. Nice inside leg kick thrown by Dusty Cramps. And a nice exchange there, both fighters landing. Josh is definitely circling a little bit more. And you talked about the athletic uh, body and the build of, of Josh Fried. Dusty might not look as, as athletic, but he's definitely pushing the pace here. 
Well, and again, that comes to Cage experience and knowing how to use what energy you have. And we have to mention that he's been on top. And, and of course, you look at Josh Fried having to control the weight of Dusty Kranz for the majority of, of two rounds. And uh, it could look to tire him out. Plus, all those muscles need fuel, and they that fuel runs out really quick. Another big body kick by Josh, or Dusty Kranz, and Josh Fried is hurt. He dropped there. He was definitely hurt, Jeremy. Yeah, and now some good killer instincts showed by Dusty Cramps as he continues to throw punches here, trying to show in. And uh, he doesn't look to be a down opponent now, definitely down. So there could have been some headshots in there. But uh, now you look at Dusty Cramps to stay safe here and uh, not give away any submissions. And he should be able to come out victorious in this round as he has in the pre uh, previous two. And you can see the welts on the midsection of Josh Fried as Dusty Kramps has been targeting that midsection all night. Even on, even on the feet, those body kicks uh, were devastating. They echoed throughout the TELUS Convention Center. And another body shot thrown by Dusty Kramps. Well, he does have them out here, but again, without being able to target the head, uh, it, it's not as beneficial because you take away a lot of the, the space that you can attack being sitting down. Now, if he gets a... a a low mount there, it, you should be in a little bit of a better position. I see he's working, uh, trying to uh, maybe go for an arm triangle. and uh, But again, with uh, only 35 seconds remaining on our assassin fight clock, he's doing a very good job of securing this round win and uh, securing himself in a good position to win the fight. Yeah, there's an elbow thrown there by Dusty Cramps that was very close to making contact with the head of Josh Fried. Oh, and he's dropping them right to the upper sternum. So it's, uh, I think that's as close as you could get with dropping those elbows. But if he stays within the rules, he's doing good. 10 seconds left in the third and final round. As Josh Fry is able to get top position and Josh Fry lands down with a, a flurry late in the, in the fight. Great job shown there by Josh Fry, but almost a little bit too late for Josh. As in my opinion, Dusty Kramps was able to wrap this fight up. Yeah, Dusty Kramps dominated most of that round landed uh, in different phases, was able to land standing striking, was able to do a submission attempt, was able to take him down. And uh, it, it's too bad that we didn't get to see Josh Fried in that position because once he got there, he was landing effective strikes. He was being very uh, aggressive. So uh, maybe something to take to the learning table for Josh Fried as he continues to move forward in his MMA career. As we see our replay here, there's a body shot thrown by Dusty Cramps and one of those vicious body kicks that crippled Josh Fry, dropped him down to his knees. And at this point, I actually thought the fight was gonna be over as Dusty moved in and started raining down the body shots. A couple of right hands, you can see him target the body, trying to go down the middle, back to the outside. Len Coy Vistel, the referee, looking in, trying to see if Josh Fry was gonna be able to defend himself. As we go up to the ring, we're gonna get our official decision rather shortly, but I'm very impressed with, with Dusty Cramps and the mindset to target the body all night long. Yeah, if you're gonna, when you take a guy down, if only you can target the body, then why not target the body when you're standing as well and try and weaken it up? And you did see that big kick drop uh, Josh Fried as we look at a replay here of just the last 10 seconds where Josh Fried was able to get on top. And uh, you see some of these huge shots that he was laying down as we continue to wait for the judges' scorecards as they add it up. Um, but uh, some, some great action here, some elbows, and unfortunately for Josh Fried was uh, in the wrong uh, time, or a little too late in the fight. Absolutely, and we talked on it, those three minute rounds are definitely a lot different than our five minute rounds. Ladies Let's and gentlemen, after three rounds Zach of fighting, Hesnawi. we go to the judges' scorecard for decision. George's throw this contest, declaring the winner by unanimous decision out of the red corner, Dusty Crab! As we expected, Jeremy, no doubt about that decision, a unanimous decision win for Dusty Cramps from Championships Creed here in Calgary. You touched on at the end of the fight, a lot to build on for Josh Fried when he was able to, to explode there in the last 10 seconds with the ground and pound. But Dusty Cramps almost threw a win away by uh, moving a little high on the mountain, putting himself in danger of getting reversed, which it was, which happened.
Yeah, and, and it goes back to with the rules as they are in Calgary, the amateur going to the mound isn't necessarily an advantage because you do take away so much offense, and it's, it's something that you can get out of, as we saw there uh, by Josh Fry.